Uh, it's been a minute since I've posted on here, made a video, but I figured I would now let you guys know what I've been up to, where I've been, why I've not been making videos, and uh, just a general update, I guess. So this is obviously the biggest update. Um, we got this back to us sometime in the, early in the new year. Um, it's the same body, same crane, just a different chassis, uh, and then that workbench bumper at the back here. So this has been working out good. Uh, that other 550 that I was running, I mean, it was just getting tired. Um, this was a heck of a project. Uh, this thing, this thing's only got 50,000 miles. It's an American truck. Um, went to pick it up probably in like June or something maybe. And it never had air conditioning and it was spring ride. So it's been converted to air at the back. And then we put air conditioning in totally factory, hundred uh, percent. The way it was, all the wiring was actually already in there, which is pretty cool. Um, it's got a mechanical 8.3 Cummins and Allison automatic transmission. Um, I put a legacy uh, seat in there just for comfort. Um, but yeah, it's it's been a pretty good truck. And then the next biggest update is uh, I, we turned the personal truck into a second service truck for a kid that I hired. Um, and he's a real good guy. He's working out good. So yeah, we got two trucks going now. Um, this one, well, this was my personal truck, but we didn't really use it much. Uh, so it's kind of sitting around. And then I thought, well, hey, if we can get a second guy in a truck. So we did, and, and that's been really helpful. Um, so yeah, it's set up pretty good. We got a compressor back in there. And then this whole slide out comes out. We'll toolbox in there. So, yeah, that's been cool. So that's a couple of updates, I guess. This truck, I was in it for a couple months there while that one was getting rigged up when they were switching the body over. But, uh, yeah, that's... That's pretty much what's going on. So kind of the reason I quit making videos was uh, I just, I hired this this guy and I kind of wanted to just focus on him, focus on him and getting him trained up. And uh, well, I just, I just got it in my head I, too a little bit, I guess. So it's just kind of awkward talking when he's in the shop and I'm talking about my project and blah, blah, blah. Um, it, it probably isn't awkward. I just feel like it is. Uh, but that's just me anyway. Um, it, I, I do enjoy it though. And I would like to continue with it. I, I do need to get better at editing videos cause it takes me forever to put out a video with, that's like 30 minutes long. So I could definitely do better at the editing. Um, but yeah, this is all that's really been happening. I'll kind of do a voiceover here in a bit. Uh, some pictures of some of the projects uh, that I left you guys off at. And then some of maybe some of the stuff that we've been up to since then. Um, there's been some pretty neat projects and some pretty shitty ones too. But uh, yeah, this old uh, Ford Louisville, this is actually my in-law's. It's got a two-stroke Detroit in it, but it's got this picker on it, and it's quite a heavy picker. Um, well, it's actually not as heavy as it looks, but it lifts a full-size engine pretty good, like out of a truck and stuff. So, you know, whereas this one struggles a little bit with a heavier one like that. So, yeah, he didn't really use the picker much. So we changed all the hoses on it and got her working good. And now we, uh, now we use this thing for our lifting. So that's kind of neat, but yeah, I'll just show you an engine in here that, that my apprentice is doing. And it's 
done a pretty good job of it and he's having fun with it and it's got to get paint yet it's just got a coat of primer on it right now but it's an old uh b model cat that came out of a uh, dump truck so we actually switched the block on the thing uh we it came in for a head gasket and we uh well we pulled the head and then we're checking checking our liner protrusion and stuff and uh found one of the liners was sunk so we pulled it to see what was going on and here the whole ledge that the that the liner sits on had pitted away and it was actually cracked like three quarters of the way around where the liner had to sit and uh i don't really think you could have uh cut the counterbores on it at least not very well and for how long it would have lasted i'm not sure um but we just decided well let's see if we can source a, a, a better block so we got a block and it didn't need any counterbores cut so we used that block and we sent the head to the machine shop and yeah pistons liners bearings all that good stuff and uh now we're here so that's been a neat project uh the truck's been here a while but uh, that's just the way it goes, I guess, when things go sideways. So, anyway, I'll quit yakking here and I'll insert some pictures and do a bit of a voiceover of what's, what's been going on. So, you guys will recognize this one. So, this is that N14 that come in and it had the bad, uh, I believe it was a rod bearing. So, it had damaged the crankshaft. So, we pulled it down pulled it out, stripped it totally down, sent it away to the machine shop, had it line board, um, rebuilt it with a new crank, new bearings. Um, the customer, kind of a cheaper route, I guess, but he reused the heads, which whatever, I mean, that's just his call. Same heads, same injectors, all that stuff, but it's been running really good and it's, not skipped a beat for a long long time well for almost a year now so that was a really good one to get done i uh, was pretty happy to see that one go um, but a neat job nonetheless yeah so this one here is that bi-directional and i made a video about diagnosing it so this one um the problem was the PTO, uh, PTO stayed on all the time. So I found that, well, I figured that the clutches were going to be burnt up and warped and sticking together. And that wasn't the case, actually. What I think happened was the, the oil was bypassing in the valve and instead of the solenoid blocking the oil to the clutch, and then applying the brake, it was actually just bypassing and it was applying the clutch as it should, but without the solenoid engaged because the brake was not smoked, not, neither were the clutches. So that little blemish there, I think, is where the valve body was warped and it allowed that uh, oil to bypass because... Yeah, like I said, my clutches were plenty good and my brake wasn't smoked. Usually when they involuntarily apply on, that's kind of the first thing to happen is you smoke your brake. And this one wasn't. So that's what I suspect was the failure was that valve right there. And this one here, this was just a basic job. Uh, customer had a hole in that block on the left there so we pulled it out and he bought that used runner on the right there so just some minor things to switch over uh, but nothing fancy on this one but a good job nonetheless um, yeah nothing more to say about that one and this one here this was an engine that went to uh, 
about an hour and a half from home. Customer, well, he obviously noticed some oil in the turbo and other awful sounds. And so I went out there and diagnosed it and he decided to have it hauled to my shop. So there's that old Ford truck getting put to work there. So we just pulled that engine out outside the shop so it wasn't taking up uh, half my shop for however long it was going to take. You can see the one head is off. That's because I pulled it out in the field when I went and looked at it. And uh, we put three new heads and new accessory drive and uh, just a full, full overhaul on that one. And that's the finished product there. So it turned out really good. And this here, this was a, this is a glycol heater. Um, I'm not really familiar with the heater portion of this thing. I just knew about the engine on the inside. So it came in because it had a ton of blow by. This was kind of a Ritchie Brothers special here. Um, kind of customer bought it, uh, took a risk on it, and it ended up being kind of junk. So uh, it's a parent bore block engine, so no liners. So we had to strip this one down, right down the block, and then we sent the block away to the machine shop, and they bored it 20 thou over, and we rebuilt it with a 20 thou over kit. So that's pistons, liners, bearings again. The head went through the machine shop and got all fixed up. And um, yeah, basically that one got a lot of work. Um, but it's been running a lot here this winter too. And it's been working good. So uh, we, you know, pretty much anything out of frame, I like to paint up and make it nice. Um, guy's paying that much for an engine and may as well make it look like he's getting that if you got the time and stuff and it is out of frame and everything's clean because it's been to the machine shop so it's like wow well, why not right and it's fun i like that so yep there's another one that we did this is a cat uh, 325 excavator so i resealed this swing drive unit a um, little bit out of my element but you know if you've rebuilt a final drive before, uh, it's virtually the same principles, just performs a different task. So we just did a new seal on that one and had the shaft repaired a little bit at the machine shop. And uh, yeah, the owner of this excavator is actually the guy that owns that uh, cat that was in primer at the beginning of this video. So pretty good guy. He's been a good customer. Okay, and then this job, this was quite the job. So this this guy, he's a scrap metal outfit. Uh, this was about three, three and a half hours from home. But the guy, the owner of this machine, he lives right near home. So uh, he was up here working and he, he was crunching, he, or he was cleaning up scrap and then he crunched an old 30 pound propane cylinder wasn't really thinking anything of it and it turns out it was full and his engine ran away on the fumes and it destroyed it uh, to the point of it being way too expensive to fix um, so we got a new engine for it and we would put that in there but the way that it's sitting there with the boom up in the air like that or the stick I should say uh, that's that's how it died um, and you can see there the house is positioned opposite to the tracks. So to get this thing on a trailer or anything like that would have been a terrible task. I mean, this is definitely when field mechanicing is uh, at its peak um, as far as um, the sense that it makes. So this was a no-brainer to go out there. We had a lot of really good weather this winter, so... Uh, the field wasn't all full of snow or anything like that. And yeah, so that was a job that I went up there in that Dodge with uh, while my truck was being fitted up for the new service body and stuff. And uh, I was able to use the new setup. That was the first job with the new setup. 
going back there to put that engine in. So it was a pretty cool job all in all. And uh, yeah, happy customer, got him running. And uh, I had some fun doing it. Anyways, guys, uh, thanks for watching. Um, if you've made it this far through all that rambling, uh, truly, thank you. <laughs> um, I hope to be making some more videos, so hopefully this is uh, the start of picking this up again. So, again, thanks for watching, and uh, we'll see you guys on the next one.